Today I want to talk about something that's an ongoing problem. And it's something that shocked me. When I seen this, it shocked me to my core. It shocked me so much that I was amazed. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words, so I have to have the Holy Ghost take over. You see what I'm saying? That's how bad it is that my, uh, my, uh, my physical mind can't possibly comprehend the uh, deception that's going on in the church these days. And uh, I want to start by reading out of the, book, the great book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 9 through 13. And the word says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which beforehand or before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that him giving out that himself was some great one. In other words, he was making everybody think that he was something great and he was a deceiver and a liar. That's what magic is. To whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is great power of God. And, in, and to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and one wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, Unbelievably, there's a lot of this going on in the church. Me and my wife, we were we were watching sermons, and this one came up. It was called the Gospel Magic Show, which surprised us unfathomably. It surprised us at the fact that magic, by itself, is deception and lies. So then, how can you mix? Only Satan can do this. Satan mixes lies and deception with the truth so that it deceives many, many people. So there's many people undeniably mistaken thinking that you can mix magic with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's impossible, beloved. You can't do such things. You cannot do such things. And... I'm wondering how people don't see this. People are this deceived and they don't know the Bible good enough to understand that they are being deceived. First John chapter four, verse one says this, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets, many false signs, many false wonders. What is, um, I want to read uh, Acts chapter 19, verses 18 and, uh, through 20. And it says, For many that believe come and confess and shewed their deeds. Many of them also, which, were, which used curious arts, and we'll get to the meaning of curious arts in a minute, brought, uh, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Curious arts, according to... Uh, Webster Dictionary is magic arts, magical arts, jugglery, practicing of the Ephesian conjurers. The uh, Ephesus was noted for its wizard and the Ephesian spells, charms or scraps of parchment written over a certain formula which were worn as a safeguard against manners of evils. 
The more important and powerful of these charms were written out uh, in books which circulated among the exorcists and were sold at great price. So you have here that uh, the price of, the, of the, the magical books that they burned in Ephesus were 50,000 pieces of silver. These books were slapped full of spells and magical magical tricks and lies and, dece and deception to uh, deceive the people. And the people opened their eyes and they started realizing that this, this abomination has been going on long enough. It's time to come out of her beloved. It's time to reach a point in our church life, in our walk with Jesus, where we start opening our eyes. There was a time in our walk with God where he looked upon us and he and he winked at our ignorance but it's time to wake up he's no longer winking he's getting serious because it's time for uh, Jesus to return it's time for Jesus to completely un and, and entirely come and he's coming for a holy church he's not coming for a church that allows a magician to come in there and to lie and to deceit and deceive all of the people. Anybody that allows these things to happen. Another thing I want to quote and I'm reminded of the great Charles Spurgeon who once said, a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Clowns entertaining the goats. Take a look at this video. And if this video does not surprise you, and you don't see that Charles Spurgeon's words are coming to pass in the last days, then I, then I, I feel sorry for you because you're not seeing the deception. You're not awake. Check out this video.
As you saw, that video was surprising, very surprising. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, it says, Even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. In these last days, Satan's coming for his lying signs and lying wonders to deceive so many that didn't know Jesus in the first place. It says that even the very elect may, if, if Jesus doesn't come, in a certain amount of time that even the very elect would be deceived. But I'm telling you, Jesus is coming before his true flock gets deceived by this ignorance. You've got so many churches these days that are accepting homosexuality as just a thing. They, I was watching a uh, street preacher the other day. He was preaching the gospel in front of a Baptist church. And he asked one of the ladies, that come out of the church. Do you believe that you have to be born again to enter the kingdom of God? And this woman, obviously close to the pastor, said no. She believed that God loved everybody and everybody was going to heaven. He's going to let everybody in. My friend, that's universalism. That is not gospel. That is the false gospel. That is not true word of God. God did not say that if even even if you're an atheist, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said there's only one way. Only one way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. You can't get there by performing magic. There is no amount of magic on earth that any man can conjure that will enter you into the kingdom of heaven. There is no sorcery. There is no spell book that has the magic formula wrote in it. There's only one book beloved and it has the formula completely and entirely from beginning to end that Jesus is the way he's the only way there is no other way stop being deceived by all of these magicians that are coming that just are trying to usher the flock away from Jesus he's trying to keep all these Christians from going to the knowledge of the truth he's trying to keep them from understanding that Jesus is the only way. You cannot be. You have to be born again. You have to come to the knowledge of Jesus. And that's the point that the Bible is trying to make. That you can't get there like Simon the sorcerer thought that he could buy the powers of the Holy Spirit. He thought he could buy his way into heaven. And what did Paul say to Simon the sorcerer? Simon the sorcerer. He said said your money perish with thee because I'm telling you you can't buy God you can't pay any amount of money God already owns everything what would he want with your money you it's all free but you have to accept it you have to accept and stay away from the ma magic you have to stay away from the line signs and wonders. You have to stay away from what the devil's trying to force you to do. He's trying to lead you astray, beloved. It's time to walk away. It's time to keep your eyes on Jesus. It's time to get your eyes off the storm. And it's time to be like Zacchaeus and do whatever it takes to keep your eyes on Jesus. It's time to do like Peter and cry out to God, Lord, save me. Save me before I I think. Quit looking at all the problems around you. Quit looking at the sleight of hand because that's all magic is. That's all magic does. And just like uh, the great Charles Spurgeon, he said, uh, it, uh, a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Today, uh, of all days, you see that the churches are full of circus freaks. They're full of all of these acts that are trying to keep your eyes on them and off of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
There's only one way and Jesus is the way. When he was on the cross, he said this. He said, it is done. It is done. But you have to believe and you have to accept what Jesus said and what Jesus did on the cross. The finished work of Calvary on Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life. So these are the uh, the last day deceptions that you have to worry about. You have to worry about Satan performing the magic, the magic, the lies, and all of these other things that he tries to put in your way. Like uh, a friend of mine. A prophet friend of mine used to say this. He used to say a well-placed stumbling block. He used to call certain things that trips up uh, my walk or anybody else's walk in, uh, as they're walking uh, through the valleys uh, trying to keep their eyes on Jesus. Satan will put a stumbling block in the way. He'll put a stumbling block in the way. He'll put some little magic trick. It looks good. It shiny. Let me look at that. And then he'll lead you away from Jesus. And Jesus is standing there waiting on you to return back to him. But you have to keep your eyes off of the world. And you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. If Peter had kept his eyes on Jesus, he would have walked safely across the water and joined the, the Lord across the lake. But he couldn't. He kept his eyes off of Jesus and on the troubles. We start looking at all of these situations that have arisen around us and we go to church and we trust our pastor and we, we trust all of these church people that they're going to lead us the right way. But we have to take our eyes off of the people and start reading the word of God as, as like it says in 2 Timothy 2.15 Study and shew thyself approved. If you don't read the Bible, then how are you going to know that you're being deceived? How are you going to know what is right and what is wrong unless you read the Bible? You have people nowadays saying there's nothing wrong with a little white lie. There's no such thing as a little white lie, beloved. There's no such thing. A lie is a lie. There's no such thing as an accidental death. If you kill somebody intentionally, it's not called manslaughter in God's eyes. It's called murder. It's called murder. And you have to understand that there's just like murder, there's no such thing as a little white lie. A lie is a lie. And performing magic tricks in church. If you're going to a church that has magic tricks going on, you have to walk away. You have you and your whole entire generation has to get away from this pastor, has to get away from this church and these deceived people. You have to keep your eyes on the truth. And the only truth that you're going to find is in the Word of God. Because there's so many pastors these days that are leading people astray. And they themselves don't know. Because they themselves don't read the Bible. They're just going by what they feel. They're going by their own feelings. And they're going by their own understanding. Rather than asking Jesus to provide understanding of the the word of God and people are starting to be led astray. All the people that never loved him in the first place are going to look at that magician in their church and say that that's okay because they never belonged to Jesus in the first place, which is a sad, sad thing, beloved. It's very sad that we're starting to see all of these churches that used to be walking straight on that path to God. They have all started veering off to the right and they've all started veering off to the left. But we have to keep our eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. And off of these things that Satan is trying to lead us astray. He's trying his darndest to do these things. And like, I, like my friend always said, that well-placed stumbling block can be a new car. He offer you a new car. He offer you a raise at work. And that's keeping your eyes off Jesus. And keep 
keeping your eyes on what Satan is trying to get you to look upon. And when you start looking upon these things, you start going further and further away from God. Let's keep our eyes on God's Word. Our God, our, uh, God's Word is Jesus. It's Jesus Christ who has who always been. He wasn't born. He was manifested. God manifested Himself in the flesh. Hallelujah. We have to keep our eyes away from the curious arts of the world. We have to keep our eyes away from all of this wizardry. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus at all times. Acts 19.19 19 specifically said it. It specifically said it. The magical arts, the curious arts, the jugglery, practicing practiced by the Ephesian conjurers. Conjuring is not a good thing. Conjuring is a bad thing. And against God, it's asking for familiar spirits. All of these magicians, they have evil spirits helping them perform these lies and tricks. I'm telling you, beloved, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hallelujah. I'm asking Jesus today, in the name of Jesus, to lead all of you down the right path and away from these magical arts, away from this wizardry, away from these slithering, slimy snakes that have come into the church to deceive so many of my beloved brethren. But Jesus tells me one thing, if they were able to be deceived, then they weren't really my brethren and they weren't really his. I'm telling you, if you're considered his, you will not be deceived by these things. Hallelujah. I'm going to say a little prayer. Lord Jesus, lead us away from these things. Lead us according to your will and your purpose. Lead us to you down the right path, Lord. And keep us safe from all of these evils that are happening in the world. Lord Jesus, we glory in your name and we praise you always and forever. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We glory in you always. I ask you, Lord, to open their eyes so that they may see so that they cannot be deceived. Make them the very elect, Lord. They cannot be deceived. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. In the blessed name of Jesus, we glory in your name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I thank you for listening, beloved. And I pray that you all have a blessed, blessed day. Brothers and sisters, Salter called time. With every head bowed and every eye closed, by a show of hands, how many does not know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Lord Jesus is calling you today. He wants to save you. He wants to bring you to repentance and He wants to bring you and, and make you His. But in order to do that, brothers and sisters, you have to, you have to, you have to come to Him, and you have to submit your whole lives to Him. But just know that, that this is this is not the end of your salvation. You have to repent from your sins. You have to please the Lord, and you have to submit your life to Him completely and entirely. Everybody, repeat after me, Lord Jesus. We thank you today. And we thank you for loving us enough to die on that old cross for us and raise, raise again on the third day. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, and we thank you for hearing us always, Lord. Lord, today, today is the day of salvation, is what your word says, Lord. Lord, we come to you today, and we submit ourselves to you completely and entirely. We admit that we're sinners, and we come to you strength Lord we want you to wash us with your blood today Lord and we want you to make us a new creature we want you to wash us with your blood Lord we want you we want to be yours we submit our lives to you we submit our lives completely and entirely to you we thank you Lord and we love you we love you Jesus wash us with your blood and we thank you, Lord, 
for we know we're sinners. We repent today. We repent, Lord, because we want to please you. Come into our hearts, Lord. Lead us on the path of righteousness. Lead us, Lord. Save us, Lord. We want to live holy, for you say you're holy. We must live holy. Thank you, Lord. If you said that prayer, you're on the path to being saved. In Jesus' name, amen.